Hi, I'm Jack. I know you've seen fish being reared in fish ponds, in lakes, and in oceans. But I know you've not seen fish being reared in vertical lake. Welcome to our vertical lake, where the sky is the limit for organic premium fish protein. Previously, I founded a company, uh, Biofit Feeds, that manufactures uh, animal feed. And uh, during uh, our processing, we faced uh, the challenge of accessing quality protein to supplement our feeds. So I saw the opportunity on how do I grow uh, my fish that can, I can be, uh, that can be used as fish meal uh, for my own processing. So I came up with a way of, I wanted to know how do we grow fish uh, in a sustainable manner, which we can then harvest, dry, and we can put it to be high protein source uh, for animal feeds. In the year 2021, uh, when COVID was here, so there was problem of accessible accessibility to animal feeds. And us in that space, uh, we also facing the same challenge. The raw materials were scarce and we could not like uh, get sustainable uh, raw materials for our processing. So I came up with this idea on how to grow fish that can be used for animal feed processing. Yes, yeah, so what I did was to uh, try to grow fish in a control system which can be grown uh, very fast within a short time that can be then used for our processing so uh, the first pilot uh, i tried doing it uh, in the lake region whereby we tried growing uh, fish outside the lake the the, uh, the nyansa bab so that they can adopt the lake system but the second pilot we came up with a system of how do we grow now the nyansa babs in containers uh, Within this journey, we took around six months uh, without being successful, but we learned a lot. And after six months, we realized that amidst growing uh, Nyansa babs, there were some uh, species of tilapia that survived uh, the transportation and they were growing very fast. So that challenged us to, to try to find out if we could then expose the tilapia in a kind of this system, then how big and how long can they grow within this system. Yes, yeah, so this was kind of uh, another journey and uh, we looked at many things like for us to develop this idea we had to look at the environment that the fish grows in, what are the temperatures requirements, what are the uh, pH requirements of the water, uh, what is the biological composition of the water that they grow in, uh, the environmental requirement and even the feeds like which kind of feeds can we give the fish to grow very fast. And within these systems, like how do we control uh, air ration? Like what, how do we provide oxygen uh, for fish growing in this, uh, in, in this system? And we were also tasked to look at how does this system uh, differentiate itself uh, from the traditional systems. Like we were not, we, were, we, we wanted to use something that is not uh, capital intensive and even equipment intensive. So it has been a long journey for around three years. Uh, we, have break, uh, we have a breakthrough with this vertical lake technology. My intention was to grow uh, the Nyansa bulbs uh, for my factory and uh, because it was, it was not successful uh, in the system that I was giving them so I wanted to grow it in my own container so when I came up with this idea I bought some container the small containers and placed them in the, uh, the, the Nyansa bulbs like I, had, I, I went to the lake and I got live Nyansa bulbs uh, put them in oxygen bags put them here and when I put them in the container I realized that these Nyansa bulbs could not survive even with, uh, more than one day. So I had to investigate uh, what the reason behind their death. So what I found out, uh, found out was that they were dying because of uh, lack of oxygen within the container. So I was to improvise a way of how do we kind of make oxygen penetrate the water so that they can get uh, oxygenated and they can thrive. So me uh, came up with a system on how we drop water uh, from above, just manually dropping water from this container, from above container, so that we can disturb the water that they are living in, so that we can cause this aeration to happen. But this was kind of cumbersome. So we came up with a way of how do we have a storage tank above, which can uh, be dripping water into this container so that it, have, it, it makes the, the Nyasa bulbs growing. Yeah, so we came up with this and uh, we realized that within three days, the Nyansa babs were not dying, so they were surviving. So we had already gotten a solution to our prob uh, this first problem, but after three days, they died. The reason being that there was uh, accumulation of waste within the container that they were growing. So remember, we are feeding them in this container. At the same time, they are also removing, excreting wastes, but these wastes were not being uh, removed away from the container. 
So here to come up with a, a system on how do we kind of remove uh, the toxic uh, water so that we can add fresh water to make them uh, live longer. So we were now able to uh, uh, remove water through out, uh, the, the container outlets, but this water was basically being thrown away because it was made of uh, dirty water and we were to add fresh water. Yeah, so in this process, uh, we, uh, I thought of uh, using my skills, uh, professionalism, what can I do uh, to recycle this water because we were like wasting a lot, of, a lot of water from this kind of container. So I went to the lab, uh, studied, studied, uh, studied which kind of microorganisms uh, that I can use to help me do what we call biofiltration in this system. So this is how we were now able to do our, the biofiltration process so that we make the water within the system very clean. Yeah, so this is our first model. And before this, uh, I, we had a container, I don't consider it a model, where we were doing our small experiments. But this what you see here is our uh, first model. You can see the lower container is where we had the first fish and this, uh, the second container had fish, but this was our reservoir tank. Basically, all this container could carry like uh, 60 pieces of fish, each container carrying 30. And the second trial was now to scale, like when we, we wanted to now, if we kind of grow a commercial, how much uh, fish can we, can we have? And we never wanted to grow very many fish in one space. So we've been like kind of modeling our system whereby we grow gradually. So from the small container that was carrying three, uh, 30 fish, we went to a container that could carry between 150 to 200 fish. And it was successful. Then later on, we were to devise on which, uh, what number of fish can we also hold within this system. So we went to another bigger container that can carry around 500 fish to 1,000 fish. And then now uh, we are now doing a commercial prototype that can carry between 1,500 fish to 6,000 fish, depending on the size of the fish that we want to sell to the market. What I mean is that we can sell fish from 100 grams uh, to 300 or 400 grams, so depending on the market demand. This uh, technology is so different uh, with the existing uh, traditional way of uh, farming fish or aquaculture. One, because it's sustainable. If you see our system is kind of secular. Uh, we are able to uh, use uh, sun uh, in terms of solar energy uh, to run the systems within the space. We are able to recycle all the water that is inside here and this means this, this system can perfectly work even in semi-arid areas and even in dry areas. Yes, the other thing is that this system is kind of, we call it hydroponics for fish. So the vertical stacking of fish uh, uh, enable us now to uh, go to uh, the upper space that I have never been ventured for fish farming. But most interestingly with this idea, uh, we have uh, proved that we can harvest uh, fish excretes or poops uh, which have never been uh, 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 harvested before through our biofiltration technology. So we are now able even to sell uh, organic uh, biopesticide fertilizers that can also be helpful uh, for crop farmers in terms of protecting crops but also providing nutrition uh, to crops. So we are looking at two things. We are able to provide uh, sustainable organic uh, protein or fish to the market but as well as uh, providing organic fertilizers and biopesticides to the market. Our route to the market is to sell uh, uh, raw fish to the local market like just a whole tilapia to the local market uh, so and uh, what we uh, what we are doing here is that we've come up with this sustainable way of producing fish. So this fish is a premium uh, kind of fish uh, for the local market because we have taken into account the quality of water that the fish is growing into. If you look at our setup, we are able to use rainwater which is clean, but we also look at the chemistry of water like the pH and other things. Uh, we look at the quality of fish that this feed is, uh, is uh, this fish is feeding on. If you compare it to the traditional or conventional way of fish farming. Yes, people do feed fish, uh, they feed, but still in a natural ecosystem, they feed on many things. Uh, then we look at the quality of water, wasabi, uh, the water that's being used outside there. We understand that uh, the water in the lakes and the water in other um, conservative environments might get con uh, intoxicated with heavy metals, with contaminants like even sprays from farms, fertilizers and uh, even sewages, sewer lines take, uh, going to the lakes and fresh waters that can also compromise the quality of fish. So we are looking at a premium uh, quality fish that can be sold locally and also internationally. Yes, uh, another route of market is to uh, look at the what the value added products from fish that has never been, uh, that is not being really 
uh, sold in the Kenyan market and that can go to the international markets like if we are able now to uh, use even uh, get fish skin and get collagens from the fish skin uh, we can still uh, partner with companies that are coming up with ideas like uh, tissue engineering uh, in medicine uh, whereby the skin is used uh, in treatment of burns and also as scaffolds in, 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 in medicine so we can work with these companies whereby we provide them uh, this kind of tissues uh, because you, re you understand that our system is so safe and clean so this means that it is safe for the medical uh, kind of practi uh, practitioners to use uh, this kind of skin in their own systems from prototype 2 i want to show you our latest commercial prototype that is currently being built come with me as we check this prototype so this is our commercial facility and what you are seeing behind me is uh, the first phase that can carry up to 6000 fish now imagine all this space having five uh, modules that means we can produce more than 30000 fish within this space uh, to, to improve the intensity and welfare of the fish uh, in this facility we are implementing AI, we are implementing sensors and cameras which can monitor fish movement, we can monitor uh, fish feeding and even automations like using robotics in terms of feeding the fish and even harvesting the fish. So this is the future commercial uh, facility of this kind of vertical lake and imagine today we are just doing four tanks, we can do up to five tanks, six tanks and even ten tanks high and that's why we need AI, robotics and even the future technology so that we can have a seamless efficiency operation in the system. I as, of, as, a, as an innovator, uh, I network a lot and I look for people with uh, uh, with a good mindset like me who want to get a better world for us. And uh, for me, uh, with this idea, uh, I have gotten support from institutions like Royal Academy of Engineering that supported uh, the pilot uh, study of this or the pilot project for this uh, innovation and they even gave uh, the first round of funding uh, to scale up uh, this innovation. I in that line have met several uh, partners, collaborators and mentors who are much willing uh, to take this innovation to the next journey to have a globally scalable uh, vertical lake that's not, can only, that cannot only operate here in Kenya but can also be exported or can also be scaled to other parts of the country. Yeah, so like today we have uh, Dr. Jess, who is my, uh, my co-founder and he is happily helping in the scale, uh, scalability of this vertical lab concept. Yeah, I'm Jess Lofts um, and I help um, many different companies to scale and grow um, and I also am a mentor for the Royal Academy of Engineering and so I got to know Jack through the mentor program that they put on Lift Advance. And I also saw the potential in his business for a sustainable, circular, you know, organic future for protein production. And so I really wanted to lean in further and help him. Well, you've seen the different prototypes. And what is really interesting was Jack was potentially going to be doing a different business model to the one you see behind us today. What we were able to do was to work together to realize the way that we could make this much more scalable and so therefore reach a much bigger um, footprint around the world for, for the protein that we can produce. And I think you can see that in this small space alone, um, we can get up to 30,000 you know, fish growing. So you can imagine that just going higher up. So we're using 15 times the yield that we would expect from the same land mass uh, with cage farming, for example, because the fish are much healthier and also because the, uh, we are going vertically. Well, I think the sky's the limit for a vertical lake in terms of, the, you know, the scalability. Each module is separate, so we can just keep on adding and adding and adding for where that market may be. So we expect to grow it bigger and help the communities in Kenya, but also this is plantable in, in any country in the African region and then wider apart as we get to explore premium markets into Europe and the USA and areas that, that will value sustainable organic protein. So eventually, you know, we want to look at uh, the most uh, the best way to benefit local communities. So we will consider how we will open source the designs there, but we want to grow, scale, prove it. 
But to, to go back to your house today and try and say, I put four tanks above a voice scene is not easy. This will not work. So we have to learn, we're learning that journey and we want to scale to that production scale. Then we will explore how we can best, you know, approach the communities to be able to sustain this and to grow this. So I think the base uh, point is 30,000 and, and then as you can say, it's modular, so we could add on to that. So I think you can scale up those sort of, you know, prices to where, um, you know, it depends on the size of the production that you want within your facility. So now we've shown you the uh, facility and the different prototypes. Let's go and see some fish and then let's go and eat some. Very tasty. Better than the one from Kisumu, from the lake.